come on, let's let's not do that. Let's take today nice and smooth. There might be a few Ford people out there who are interested. There might be some Ford people who are interested because, dude, we have got some really interesting stuff to talk about on this episode of TFL Now Live. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, guys. Welcome Hello. to Ford Tuesday, apparently. Ford Tuesday. Today, it's not just Ford, Nathan. We're talking about all sorts of or old names with new faces, or in your case, an old face with a new name. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nathan's birthday, everybody. How exciting is that? Yay. I'm not going to tell him how old you are, uh, uh, per your request. God. Um, they can figure it out, I'm sure. Yeah. Someone can Someone can go find that information online. It's going to really somewhere. suck when they say I'm older than I am, or if they repeat that I'm your dad. <laughs> He's not my dad. Let it be known. Uh, so today we got a bunch of stuff to talk about, namely uh, some breaking Bronco news, as a lot of you guys have been waiting for, I'm sure. So we will get into that in a second here. Uh, some photos allegedly showing the new baby Bronco, as it might be called. It's not what it's going to be called, but that's the working name we have right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also talking about a bunch of other old names that are coming back from the dead, like the Supra, the Jeep truck. The uh, Blazer. The Blazer, the Bronco. We're talking about all of those today. Uh, so while we're doing this show, we want to hear which of these vehicles you guys are most excited to uh, see, drive, hear about, play with. Um, and of course, if you enjoy the live show, please support us through YouTube Super Chat feature. Uh, $5, you're on the hood. 10 bucks, TFL truck bumper sticker. 25 bucks, TFL car or TFL truck patch, just like these. And of course, $50 gets you one fine TFL truck trucker hat signed or not. It's up to you. Uh, if you do send us anything through the Super Chat, send an email to info at tflcar.com uh, with your address so we know where to send your stuff. Okay, Baby Bronco, dude. What the heck is the Baby Bronco? All right, now, it may be called the Maverick because recently, well, recently being over a year ago now, uh, Ford did re-acquire um, that name. Mm. And because of that, a lot of people think that it's going to be called the Maverick. Uh, but what we're calling it now is the Baby Bronco. The reason why is this is a vehicle that is technically considered a crossover, so there's no frame, mm -hmm. there's no solid axles. Yep. It is front drive, rear, uh, front drive with, uh, you know, a rear drive system of some sort. We don't know exactly what that's going to be. Mm -hmm. We believe it is based on the Ford Focus Active. Now, if you recall that name, well, that was going to be a vehicle that was sent here that was built in China, long story short, it's not going to happen. However, that platform is rumored to be underpinning this vehicle so yeah hit it already vince clark twenty dollars and 99 cents <laughs> thank canadian you, vince. thanks vince he says happy b-day nathan look at that thank you very happy much happy birthday nathan i appreciate that um so as you were saying though the, yeah the, the baby bronco you know back in march ford had this thing called the ford uncovered event mm -hmm. uh, which went through some of the major reveals that are going to be coming from ford in the coming years we didn't see much of the new Bronco itself, but we did find out more about this little guy. It's baby brother. And this is a really interesting picture actually right here. Uh, um, it's You may not be able to see it very well, but look very carefully, and you're going to notice an outline next to it. That is supposed to be the silhouette of the new Bronco, the actual Bronco that's coming out. So you can see the size disparity between the two, and the fact is, is that the new Bronco um, looks a lot bigger and it should be a lot bigger mm -hmm. and whereas in the Ford Bronco we know for a fact will be based on a truck platform that being the Ranger right this is based on a car platform of some sort and it looks to me like more like a sort of a renegade fighter size yeah that's what I was thinking too maybe it's a little bit bigger it looks kind of longer in the hood than the renegade doesn't it does it? look pretty long it also looks to me like it has a lot of ground clearance actually for something this small yeah I'm actually really really curious to see what they did here's the thing TFL truck and TFL car we like to take crossovers off-road because mm -hmm. we want to see what they can really do exactly and we rarely get a vehicle that kind of says hmm maybe this will do something special off-road so that looks like a cool possibility what do you guys think about this oh pfft. Trucker Dan, thank you very much. Ten dollars, Trucker Dan. Happy really birthday, Nathan. That. Have a beer on me. One of my favorite guys on the channel. Thank I, you. I agree. I, I will have a nice cold beer tonight. We're lucky to have Nathan around. Uh, so of course, Ford teased a picture of this baby Bronco back at that meeting we were talking about. Uh, but these are some very recently leaked photos from a dealer meeting in Las Vegas. Is it the same dealer meeting where we got the leak of the GT500 and, and the Ford Armor Mustang? And the Ford yes. Mustang. So. That has been like the most leaky dealer meeting 
in the world from Ford. Yeah, which we're really grateful for, by the way, or else we wouldn't have a show today. Exactly. No, yeah. I mean, seriously, this is this is really cool news. Look at this thing. Even if it's been manipulated via some graphics and whatnot, I have a feeling that we're looking at something that's very close to, if not the actual vehicle. Mm. Now, the question is, where are we going to see it? Where is it going to debut? We're not too sure. However, that's a great question. it stands to reason that Ford will have something at the Detroit Auto Show. I'm hoping. <laughs> we hope. Okay. There's, of course, no official announcement on None the whatsoever. Uh, we, we, we even asked them. We sent them, didn't we? Yeah, we sent yeah. them a thing. We asked Ford for a comment. What was the thing exactly? Their they comment said, was, We are excited no about uh, our future, but we have no comments or something along those lines. Yeah, so, yeah. sorry, that, that's how Ford is. And, you know, obviously they want to keep, you know, the cat in the bag for a little longer. Yeah. This doesn't even have a name yet. That's why we're calling it the Baby Bronco, because officially there is no name out yet from Ford. Uh, do you like it? Do you think it's cool? Do you are you interested in it? Because I, I, oh, really, I'm terribly really interested. interested. You know, to a certain degree, we all knew that the Bronco was coming for a couple of years mm -hmm. now. We have a pretty good idea of what it's you know it's going to be and what its target is, but we don't know much about this. Yeah, it, it's a mystery, and that's kind of the cool part. Ford hinted more than once that they did want to take it up another level. They don't like playing second fiddle to Jeep. No, no. they don't, and. Okay, that makes sense. So what are they producing? Well, the Raptor Ranger is not coming here, at least no time in the near future. So we know the Bronco's coming. We know this little baby Bronco's coming. What does that mean? That means possibly very good off-road capability, mm. which is huge, right? I mean, that's what you guys want. That's what we want, for sure. So I cannot wait to take it to Moab. Let me put it to you that way. Yeah. I get this, I get my hands on it, I'm going to take it from Rome and I'm going to lick the door handle so you won't touch it, and I'm going to drive it straight to Moab. Wow, that's, bold. that's a bold move. He's not um, watching he, right now, right? He's he gonna, might be watching. No, he's not we, watching. We have no idea. Uh, so, of course, we can't talk about the baby Bronco without talking about the actual Bronco, which we do know a little bit more about than the baby Bronco. Uh, we know the new Bronco, the actual full-size Bronco, the one that this silhouette is trying to show off, uh, it's coming in 2020. It'll be on the Ranger platform, and odds are it's going to have a very similar powertrain to the Ranger. That's what we're expecting. The four-cylinder EcoBoost. Possibly, possibly with the seven-speed manual transmission possibly. as well. Possibly. We've heard rumors of a manual Bronco, which would be really cool. Uh, and we also know it's going to be built at the same plant as the Ranger, which is Wayne, Wayne Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one thing that the title of this show kind of hinted at uh, is there's, what, what's it called, the Ranger 6G Forum? Is that right? Yeah, Ranger, or Bronco 6G. Sorry, the Bronco 6G Forum um, has also surmised a rumor that maybe Bronco is going to be a new brand for Ford, right? So we had this discussion a couple live shows ago where we talked about Mustang being a brand for Ford, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and now maybe it's the case that Bronco is going to be another sort of sub-brand for the Ford Motor Company. Why not? I mean, that could be something they do. But then again, does that mean this is going to be a Bronco too? <laughs> I, I actually had to drive a Bronco 2 for about a year. Was, had to drive? Yeah, it was my family's wrecking yard. It was one of the cars that they, they gave me. And, um, boy, you think a Suzuki Samurai's tippy. <laughs> that Ford Bronco 2 was really, really tippy. But it was also, it had a lot of interesting ideas to it. Maybe that's something that they're doing here. They're trying to make something smaller that's very off-road worthy. And maybe it's worthy of the Bronco name. I kind of hope they don't do that, personally speaking. I think it'll sort of oversaturate the whole idea of a Bronco being special. Mm. But that's just me. I, I could be wrong. At this point, just give me the damn car. Yeah. Well, we can also give you a ding because wow. Jose Figueroa sent you $25. Thank you, Jose. Happy birthday, Nathan, once again. Thank you. You should have birthdays more often, dude. I really should. And yeah. some really nice messages I've been reading here. Um, thank you very much to everybody who's been sending out the birthday wishes. It's I don't like celebrating my birthday, so this is overwhelming. That um, means my siblings are, might see this and finally figure out it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No. All right, um, let's get to the... To, now, now, we've covered this, and we want your comments, by the way, and what you think, but there are other vehicles... That are coming. Of course. Before we get to that, oh. I have one comment, though. One comment yeah. that the um, boss is going to read. First is, sorry for the terribly low resolution picture. Yeah, this there, is what It's we kind of like a picture of a picture, so that's not it's great. It's double well, pixelated. Yeah. Detail. But yeah. the other comment, my real comment, is going to be, I'm actually surprised, especially given how much has come out of this dealer meeting in Las Vegas, you know, the GT500, Baby Bronco, four-door Mustang, and 
who knows what it's else is coming. Stuff. Ford has actually managed to keep the wraps on the new Bronco pretty well. Um, no I went to the Ford Uncovered event in March, mm -hmm. and they showed us a lot of what's coming. You know, we did get to see the GT500. We got to see some of their other vehicles, but they wouldn't even show journalists the Bronco. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they've managed to keep the wraps on it pretty well. There are renderings floating around what it's going to look like, but we actually don't know, and we don't really have an inkling at this point. I mean, we know the basic shape, we know the basic right? shape. That's, that's going to be a big box with a so they've done a on the really back, good right? job keeping that under wraps. So. And by now, we expected to see a few of these things testing, mm. and nothing yet. nothing yet, or well, maybe a p couple possibilities. It's hard to tell exactly what is a test mule and what isn't, right? Yeah. So, um, thank you guys so much. Um, so let's move on really quickly. Uh, sorry, Chris <laughs> Vasquez or. Chris Velasquez asks, is the Bronco going to have solid axles? Given it's based on the Ranger platform. It's going to, rear axle for sure is going to yeah, be solid. Yeah, at least I'm the rear sure axle. That. Front, that's been a rumor, but I'm pretty sure it's going to have an independent front end. In fact, a lot of people have already said almost with certainty it's going to have an independent front end like the Ford F-150. And the thought goes that because, or like the Ranger, the thought goes in that because these vehicles will share components, they'll be able to keep the overall price down. That's kind of sort of the prevailing thinking right now. I don't know for sure if that's true, but it makes sense. Should they have a solid front axle? Hell yeah. Yeah, Bronco should probably have it a solid should. front axle. It should. It should. If they want to comp if they want to compete directly with the Wrangler, that's exactly what they need. However, we've proven we hell Chevy's proven with the ZR2 Colorado that with an independent front suspension, you can have a locker in there, and that sucker will climb anything. So that might be what Ford's thinking about. Could be. Um, okay, enough on the Bronco. We spent a good 10 minutes talking about the Bronco news. There you guys go. We've seen the baby Bronco. Later on, we'll check out this when, when this becomes a video, and we'll hopefully be able to answer a few more questions and, yeah. and kind of talk with you guys, too. If we miss anything. And, of course, over on TFL Truck, I'm sure Andre is going to be keeping on top of this news uh, very strictly. So you can always go Actually, over this there. is going to be on car, right? Will TFL car? Oh, I guess yeah. this would be on car. <laughs> Yeah, it's, not it's kind of split. We have the baby Bronco on car because it's based on a crossover yeah. platform. Right. The big the Bronco is on, big truck. Bronco on, on truck. truck cause yeah. that's a truck. Okay. We'll just keep tuned into TFL in general and you'll, Go back you'll and learn forth. everything. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's talk about some other cars and trucks that are reviving old names. Uh, because I think anytime you bring back an old name, it's, uh, it can be a little contentious, right? Well, ex expectations are out there. Right. So uh, the first one we have to talk about then is probably the Chevrolet Blazer, right? Uh, a big name that came back in a way that I think it's fair to say was disappointing to some people. Um, and, you know, because mostly GM is taking that name in a totally different direction than what the original Blazer was like. Well, even the second and third generation Blazers, you know, Trailblazers and whatnot, those were all at least somewhat truck based and somewhat capable of off roading. The bottom line is that Chevy really wanted to make a sporty crossover, which is kind of like a tall wagon, and they decided to resurrect the Blazer name for it. And frankly speaking, a lot of people are kind of dismayed about it. I am too. Look, if they named this thing anything else, if they named it the Land Snatcher, I don't care. That'd be great. Land Snatcher. I love it. It's a great Land name. Snatcher. Yeah, yeah. Just, 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 just sure, yeah. yeah I got you. Um, but the point is, is that by using the Blazer name, it, it, it evokes a whole bunch of things, especially with people who've owned a Blazer in the past. And unfortunately, none of those, none of those things even comes close to what this is actually representing. So that's the problem, right? I mean, do you guys agree with me? This is one of those instances in which I think they, they could have named this whatever they want, right? Exactly. It's like a small crossover. Didn't have to be the Blazer name. And I think, you know, you kind of, I think you just missed an opportunity to bring back something that was super, or well, relatively off-road capable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, something to compete with the Wrangler. Perhaps. And the Bronco. And, and the, the Bronco, Bronco. Which we and, know, know and has been Here's coming. the crazy part. General Motors had a lot of forewarning that the Bronco's coming. Yeah. And they knew just as early as we did that it's going to be an off-road vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yet they had their bean counters go, well, you know, that's probably not that big of a deal. Let's bring out the Blazer and make it street ready. Street ready. Yeah. So there you go. Look, a lot of stuff that General Motors do, does, I like. You know, once again, the ZR2, fantastic awesome off-road. One of the best vehicles out there. But this idea just doesn't quite sit right with me. Now, I'm looking forward to driving it because who knows, you know, it could be a surprisingly good vehicle. But in terms of name use, not a great idea. 
Yeah, uh, I'm with you on that one. So right. next up, let's talk about the Ford Ranger, which we already talked about a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, we're getting the Ranger back uh, as the midsize truck market has been heating up for quite some time. Obviously, you talked about Colorado ZR2. Uh, Andre just drove the Bison. That's correct. He drove the Bison. And in December, Andre will be driving this vehicle off-road and towing with it and giving you some serious you know he's mr truck jr so yeah he's going to give you all the basics on it and we already have a video where we cover as much as we can find on the ranger which is already out there on tfl truck and then we have another video that's on tfl now about the ranger so they're fairly popular videos but the point is is that this is a truck that was fairly well executed some people are a little disappointed with it um, i've heard a lot yeah. of people say it doesn't look that much different than the ones overseas yet According to Ford, it has its own unique platform, its own unique sheet metal. It is built specifically for our audience. But I will say this, one thing guys think about. It comes standard with a 10-speed automatic transmission and a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Standard. Base model, that's where you start at. Yeah. That in itself is pretty impressive to me, considering how expensive trucks are in general. So that's something to think about. Uh, so yeah, cool truck, they brought back the name. Hopefully it'll be as good as I think it might be. Um, you know, we'll have to see. Here's what I think about people who are disappointed in the new Ranger. Yes, it does look almost identical to the global Ranger, right? That's, that's it's very, a given. It's very similar, yeah. But at least we have the Ranger back. You know what I mean? Yep. I mean, we spent a long time without the Ranger, and it left the mid-sized truck market open to pretty much just the Tacoma, the uh, Frontier, and the Colorado slash the GMC Canyon, right? Oh, even the Honda Ridgeline. And the Ridgeline, uh, although even the latest Ridgeline, some people have issues with calling that a truck, but that's a different discussion. The point is, we have the Ranger back and they have plenty of time to redesign it to make it look different from the global model going forward, if that's what Ford wants to do. I'm happy to have the competition and I'm happy to have the Ranger back. It's true. For those of you guys who are curious about you know whether a vehicle will improve, I guarantee you they wouldn't even touch the Tacoma if they didn't have other vehicles to compete against it to force Toyota to make the Tacoma that much better, right? So the Ford, uh, the Ford Ranger does that. It, it, it forces you to go one step further, and I like that. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of names to vehicles that perhaps we don't like the looks of, um, <laughs> the next one is the Toyota Supra. The Supra is coming back. We've known about this for a really long time. Uh, and we're getting closer and closer to its reveal, which we now know is going to be in Detroit. D Detroit Auto Show. Uh, the Supra name is another one of those names that's like, you cannot mess with the Supra, right? I mean, that is not a name that you can just kind of dump out some car and just slap a name on it, right? It's been 20 years since it was out. I mean, that's the thing. Supra has always kind of stood for your rear drive bias vehicle that was a kick-ass vehicle in the corners. Mm surprised a lot of sports car owners and yet was durable enough to last 150,000 miles without batting an eyelash. And uh, now it looks a lot um, different. It now looks granted, different. it looks really different. I don't know what I've seen a lot of renderings and whatnot and mm -hmm. some of them it, it just doesn't it looks a little weird to me. I actually prefer the way the Z4 which was co-developed with this vehicle. Right. The BMW Z4 I think is actually a better looking vehicle than this but that's just a personal opinion. However, I am hoping that at the Detroit show, I will freak out and jump on the front of the camera and go, hey guys, this thing looks amazing. That's what I'm hoping, right? Yeah. Uh, you guys with me on that? It looks are important when you have a car like this, and it's not going to be some sort of four-cylinder little runabout. This is a serious sports car we're talking about, so we'll see. I'm excited to see how the Super turns out, and I hope they don't mess it up. Uh, the next vehicle with a new name coming back, potentially, this but one is this actually is a rumor. rumor. Uh, there are rumors that FCA might bring back the Dodge Viper with a Hemi V8, not a V10, as it used to have. Uh, with It sort of makes sense, right? Because we know that Chevy is going to be bringing out the new mid-engine Corvette, uh, so Dodge might have to compete again. One of the rumors is that they're looking for a way to bridge Alfa Romeo and Performance Dodge, mm -hmm. and this would be the vehicle to do it because it'll have some components from Alfa Romeo, it'll have some components from Dodge. It'll be a hodgepodge of hopefully high performance goodness, which will skew some of the issues that they had in the past. Um, once again, this is a rumor. There's been no announcements whatsoever. However, I can say with confidence that nearly everybody at SRT, everybody who worked with Ralph Giles, knew that he wanted that car back and he would do anything to make it come back. And he's a pretty big guy over at FCA, so, mm -hmm. 
Let's uh, fingers crossed on that one, okay? What do you guys think? I mean, do you guys want the Viper back? You want it to kick some ass? I think so. Bony, yeah. Bony Chuck says new Viper, huh? Well, imagine this. Imagine a Viper with more power, yeah. yet lighter, mm. and supercharged. Yeah. That could be really good. That could be cool. Yeah. So. Or, look, ooh, Andrew Jackson, good point. What about the Elephant motor in the Viper? Why not? Why not? Why the hell Seven not? Seven liter, supercharged, thousand, thousand horsepower. horsepower Viper. I am all <laughs> in on the thousand yeah. horsepower Viper. I'm down with that 100%. Because bring it on Corvette, right? So this oh, it could be the third golden age of, of, of hot horsepower. cars. Yeah. Uh, next up, of course, we've been talking about this a fair amount in the last few shows, but mm -hmm. it's another name that's coming back. The Jeep truck, right? After several years, uh, we're finally going to be getting a Jeep truck. We've been hearing This is about a rendering, forever. by the way, a really good one. Uh, from the, our friends at the Jeep Scrambler Forums, which might be... Changing their names. <laughs> might be changing their names. And the reason why is because uh, it's, it's a leak, so it's unconfirmed. But the name that supposedly they'll be going with, it, instead of Scrambler, is Gladiator. Gladiator. Yeah. Now, bear in mind, Scrambler and Gladiator both have history at Jeep, and they do like to reuse names. But the Scrambler wasn't quite a full-blown pickup truck, whereas in the Gladiator was. And the Gladiator lasted a lot longer in terms of its life at, F's, well, back then, Chrysler. Yeah, it went Back then, no, the Jeep, AMC, God. Anyway, the point is... It was is, like the 60s up until the 80s. Yep, they up the until Gladiator. 1988, I believe. Uh, 62 to 88, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, sound about right, producer? Yeah. 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 All right. So that could be really cool. I'm, I'm, it's going to be the biggest event at the LA Auto Show. We're going to cover the crap out of oh, it. Oh, yeah. Whatever you guys want to know, we're going to find out. We're going to grab the guys who built it and, and like, hold them against gonna, the vehicle. We're going to kidnap them. And take slap them. Back, them tell know. us everything you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so We're going to get everything we can something find like out. That. And, of course, the LA Auto Show starts not this coming Monday, but the Monday after. Yes. Uh, so we'll be there in L.A. covering everything, but especially the Jeep truck. Um, so right after Thanksgiving, guys, stay tuned. Right after Thanksgiving. A lot to be thankful for. At this year, <laughs> uh, okay, and then the last, the last returning nameplate we have to talk about uh, is another rumor, right? But we think there might be a new Ram Dakota. So uh, Ram is also maybe, we know they're working up a mid-sized truck. That's confirmed. They're building a mid-sized truck that we will see in the next couple of years. We don't know if it's going to be called the Dakota or not, though. Right. Now, a lot of people want the name Dakota to come back. It was actually, you know, at the time, it was a revolutionary truck. Mm -hmm. It introduced a lot of things that other trucks didn't have. At the, you know, the earlier versions of a quad cab, the earlier versions of a V8 that's made it with a very small vehicle. Lots of different types of trucks through the time, even a convertible. Yep, there was a Shelby convertible thing of a bobber with the, that what they did. <laughs> yeah. But it was never called the Ram Dakota. It was always the Dodge Dakota. Right. So will they stick with that or will they call it the Ram 100? We don't know. No idea. But there's a chance, and I think a fairly good one, that they will bring back the Dakota name. So yeah. there you have it on that. I mean, now it used to be the Dodge Ram 1500, right? And then they just switched to Ram, and then it turned into its own brand. I still accidentally slip out Dodge more often yeah, than not. Yeah. You know, this is considering a lifetime of, of Dodge trucks. Now, uh, so we want your opinion on that, by the way. But also, we need to move on to something that uh, came to ask. In... Before we one second, guys. Before we do. Um... While we're on the subject of, of Ram and their new mid-sized truck, possibly the new Dakota, there were a few comments that came out um, to bring this conversation back around talking about the Bronco mm -hmm. of a new Ram Charger. Remember that? Oh, SUV oh well, I, 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 drove, I drove one, and, and it, was, it was terrible. <laughs> it was so bad compared but, to the Bronco. But the concept, though, if they were to bring back a, a mid to full-size-ish SUV, mm -hmm. particularly with two doors, which yeah. we think the Bronco will have, Hopefully, a two-door variant. Yeah. Mm. You know, I'm Maybe. I'm for it. You know, I mean, I, I try to look at the return on investment. I hate having to think like a bean counter, but this helps when you're trying to predict what automakers are doing. Yeah. So you need to think about what platform they're using. Now we know for a fact that there's other things coming out there. There may be a Jeep Grand Wagoneer coming out in the very near future, which yeah. will be based loosely on the Ram 1500 platform. And if so, that's gonna be a big SUV that competes with the Navigator and the Ex uh, Expedition and of course the Suburban. But would they make something like that into a two-door? Ooh, I don't know. I doubt it. You'd have to shorten down the frame. You'd have to shorten down the entire vehicle. I just don't think there's quite a business case in there for that. Do I want it? Hell yeah. Give me more and more trucks. But at the same time, 
Particularly if you put a Hellcat engine in it. <laughs> right. Then put a Hellcat, then everything is better. Well, because at the point that you're FCA, right, you already own Jeep. You don't necessarily want to produce another Jeep that would eat the Wrangler sales. Well, exactly. Or you, a Dodge or a Ram product that would eat the Wrangler sales. Well, I mean, that's that makes a the, lot of money for them. Exactly, which is one of the reasons they were so careful in building the Jeep truck mm -hmm. Gladiator or Scrabbler is they knew that they were concerned about two things. One, Ram 1500 sales, and they're on fire. They are very close to catching up with General Motors. Yeah. And then on the other side, they knew that they were building another mid-sized truck. Now, I have a feeling the whole point of having the Dakota or whatever they're going to call it is so it can go underneath price-wise the Jeep truck, because that Jeep truck's going to be expensive. You it's not going to be cheap. Oh, no, be cheap. Uh, I, good luck getting one for 40 That's what I'm thinking. But yeah. we'll find out soon enough. Um, can we move on to the uh, Ask TFL, Ask TFL or portion? Or, are we good? Oh, a lot of people, quick. by the way, are saying bring back the Dodge Dakota or the Ram Dakota, uh, and a lot of people are saying back, uh, saying bring back the Ram Charger with, with a Hellcat engine. I mean, it would be badass, but once again, I'm trying to think logically the way perhaps the automaker would think about building something that's like one-off. They try to share as much as they can so they can stretch out everything. So. Right. You think about the platform and the body and the, all the other stuff. But at the same time, a 1,000 horsepower Ram truck, yeah, that would be pretty cool. That would be cool. Okay, um, let's move on to uh, Ask TFL. Now, guys, if you have questions, by all means, put it down there, and our producer will hopefully grab a couple before we're done. Right, of course. But we only have a few more minutes until we have to wrap. So We had to grab some, uh, or we decided to grab some pre-selected questions you guys send us tons of emails all the time yep and we do our best to respond to a lot of them but some of them we think are good enough questions that we should answer them here on the live show or, or on ask mr truck or whatever show we want to do that on uh if you do have questions though please keep sending to the, um, them to us uh info at tflcar.com again is a good email to use it may take a few tries before we're able to get to it so just so you know we i mean we're kind of we get, popular now. We get a lot of questions. We get, <laughs> we get a lot of questions. questions. Uh, so today's first question comes from Don, who asks, uh, I'm looking for an SUV slash crossover for off-road use. That's important. I like to go gold mining in the California desert, and I've gotten stuck in my current two-wheel drive Honda Pilot. What should I get? Well, he's looking to spend no more than $18,000, which means used territory. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new out there that you can get for anywhere near that price. No. Um, and he wants something comfortable and capable for light to moderate off-roading. And his wife doesn't want a truck. Okay. okay. So we found a few things on Craigslist. And um, let's, let's start with the 2015 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, which is priced, this is a Denver Craigslist, by the way, $16,988. It has 33,400 miles. Wow. Very low. So bad. why the low price? Uh, what do you think? Good not, question. I hail damage. Hail, hail damage. damage. That's right. Very popular Ooh, it's here in a Colorado. Golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> the picture is a little low resolution. But yeah, yeah, it is low is resolution, good. but it's my fault. I apologize. Yeah, but the point. Okay. Let's well, if you get out of Craigslist. Yeah, but yeah. the point is, is that um, in Colorado, at least, and in other states where there's a lot of uh, potential for hail damage, there are huge sales all the time for hail damaged cars, which means mechanically they're fine. Right. It just means their sheet metal is ruined to the point to where. In some cases, it behooves the insurance company to either sell it off or right. have the owner trade it in and get very little money for it. So, you know, as long as you don't care about the exterior appearance that much, or if you know somebody who has a body shop who can fix it for you for right. very cheap, that's a hell of a deal because normally these things are kicking in around 20. So, and you know, at the point that this is going to be just something to go off roading in, go gold mining in, you know, do you really need it to look perfect? I mean, you're probably going to scrape it up while you're off. Well, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, your wife will you throw things at it. Yeah, mine does. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, but, no, nothing. Um, so the point is, is that uh, the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, in my mind, even though this is a 2015, it still is considered, in my mind, once again, one of the most capable off-road crossovers out there. It is excellent mm -hmm. off-road, yeah, and it drives nice on the street. Um, there's, it's low mileage, so something to check out. Now there's another one. There's another one that is not low mileage. Uh, we no. also found the 2007 Toyota FJ Cruiser for $16,000. It's yellow, it has 149,000 miles, and it has a V6 with a manual yeah, transmission. Manual transmission, yeah. it's so cool. Uh, which is awesome. Everybody in the office was starting to think of, like, uh, maybe we ditch, mm. uh, what, do we, what do we get rid so of? So I was looking at some of Tommy's cars and thinking, I, he doesn't know if I'll sell them you know, on Craigslist real quick. And <laughs> look, quickly, at, look, at the, the, look at the dashboard is yellow too. What's really Holy cool is this moly. has, um, it does wow. have electric locking rear diff. Yeah. 
Uh, it has a tow package. It has, um, you know, it's a good... Okay, it's yellow. Isn't it basically a Forerunner with just a different body? It's Well, no, it's a shorter, much shorter body. The ah. thing about this, and we're going to talk about Forerunner in a minute, yeah. is that the, one of the things about these vehicles that at the time was better than the Jeep Wrangler of the time, this is 2007, is the fact that on the road, this rode much better. Yeah. It had an independent front suspension. It didn't handle great, but it handled a little bit better than the Jeep. It definitely had a better ride than the Jeep, and it's a Toyota, so... Fairly well built. Forever. This, this one, one lasts for freaking ever. This one is barely, barely scratching the surface. Yeah, 149,000 miles. Uh, it also has a yellow grill. I just noticed that is. Yeah, that looks like somebody custom got custom touches. Yeah, a little rattle can it there. Really but really likes the color yellow. It's very yellow, but then again, that's why they have wrap, so you can wrap it in something else. Yeah, you can wrap it in whatever. I, I, I dig it. I actually think it's a really cool uh, vehicle, and thank God I've already got too many vehicles to. Yeah. Buy that one. Yeah, exactly. You could buy this for me, though. Ah, speaking of Toyotas, oh, <laughs> notice I totally ignored you. Uh huh. Um, his car's in the shop. Okay. Uh, 2012 Toyota 4Runner SR5. You can't go wrong with a 4Runner as long as it's running right. Yeah, seventeen thousand three hundred twenty-two dollars. I mean, yeah. you're right in that price range you're looking for. This one's high mileage. Right? Very high mileage, but once again, it is a Toyota product that's known for going much further than the mileage on it. Eight, 189,000 miles. That is up there. Um, now, obviously, the SR5 is not a TRD. It's on an off-road model, but despite that, you know, the 4Runner still does come with a fair amount of off-road capability sort of baked into it already. Solid rear axle, mm -hmm. really, good, re re uh, really good wheel articulation uh, for, for a vehicle like that. And, you know, they did everything well. It was never exceptional in anything, but it rode fairly well on the highway. They're safe vehicles. And, yeah, off-road, even the SR5, more than capable. And if you need more capability, it's not hard to get components to add to it to right. give it, you know, basically more off-road ability. That reminds me, the next vehicle is another excellent choice for off-roading, but it's even better on-road than the uh, Toyota 4Runner. And that's the 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. So this one is seventeen thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars, uh, towards the top end of our of our price range of eighteen grand. It's got one hundred four thousand three hundred seventy-five miles. But I mean, for something under twenty grand to go off-road with, even just some mild off-roading, I mean, it is a Jeep, right? Mm -hmm. So it already it inherently has that Jeepy off-roady goodness, right? Uh, that it just comes. Well, with. It's the Overland, so it has a much nicer interior mm -hmm. and uh, its suspension setup. And off-road ability right out of the box is decent. Put a good set of tires on there and you can go anywhere. I mean, within reason. And from what you were saying to us about what you do off-road, um, that sounds like it's um, right up your alley. All right, let's move on because we are right on pretty much out of time. Uh, yeah, well, one question to answer really quickly. Oh, Brad yeah. Beasley asks, how do you donate? Right below that chat box is a little dollar sign. And you can hit the dollar sign and then go through the process of showing your support for TFL now. Yeah, thanks, um, Brad, for looking. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, so the next um, letter to us, you want to read that one? Yeah, our Marcos Roel asks, uh, my wife and I are a fan of your show, and we're based in San Diego. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we found out that we'll be in L.A. at the car show, at the auto show. Uh, we're already, we already purchased a ticket, and we would like to know what date you guys will be there because we really want to see you guys. Um, so this is an interesting thing you guys should know about how auto shows work in general. Uh, we go to the LA Auto Show during the press days. So that for us will be, I think it's November 26th, a Monday, to November 29th, which is the Thursday. Uh, the show's general, uh, the, the general showing opens November 30th. on November 30th, so the yeah. day after we leave. Um, and, you know, the reason that they open the show early for press is so that we can get in there we see the reveals. We can get our stories out without, you know, being, uh, I don't, I don't want to say interrupted, but basically without being interrupted mobbed. or mobbed by uh, the general population coming we would, there just to look at the cars. We would love to see you guys. We tried to make this work before. Unfortunately, being at the show and, and doing our job, even if you're able to get into press days, TFL, we are the hardest working we group you will big. see there. We yeah. are running, literally to different debuts or we're running up to edit something or yep. running to write something in the press room. So during those days, we're going to be running around like chickens with our heads cut off. However, if a lot of you guys really want to see us, um, do me a favor and send that request to info at tflcar.com. The reason why was I was thinking about just hanging out perhaps somewhere near the show 
on the Wednesday night or the Thursday, uh, no, the, the, the month, the two, sorry, Tuesday night or Wednesday night, one of those two nights, and maybe saying hi to a few of you guys at a coffee shop or something like that and bringing some swag with. That was the idea, doing it near the show, but it's one of those things where if you, if you guys aren't interested, I totally get it, but just, just let us know. If you are interested, we get enough requests, then we'll definitely give it a shot. We can, we can try our best to make something happen. I can have Mike on the street corner holding one of those TFL signs and I'll flipping it. I'll flip the flip sign. Flip it. Yeah, that's... Um, yeah. No, so, I mean, if you take a look at... We should, we should release the schedule of an auto show after it happens one time. Because what happens is you basically get this schedule, right? Mm -hmm. And from 8 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock at night... Every half hour, there's a new press release from a different manufacturer in a different segment of the convention center, unveiling a car, unveiling a new model, whatever it is. There's literally something happening every half hour, and you actually have to run around the whole convention center. And on top of that, sometimes other events will happen on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they're giving out special awards. We don't usually cover that. But they're also testing EV cars in the parking lot. And they have you yeah. know, uh, Tropicana girls uh, like down the street. I have to go to that. And right. there's other stuff that's happening at the same time. And unfortunately, what that means is that we're kind of pulled in three different directions. So during show times, especially on Wednesday, that is going to be our one of our biggest days. Tuesday is kind of a half-ish day. Wednesday, all day long, man. And we get there really early because we need to set up all of our stuff in the press room. And then we leave late to kick all of our... Sorry, Nathan. Just because it's your birthday doesn't mean you can drop the mic. Hold on. Uh, Felipe Moreno sent us two seventy nine Canadian. Please Thank make you. a trucker's food video at Snarf's. Anyways, guys, that's enough for today's live show. Uh, I think we've taken you through everything we have for today. Baby Bronco is coming. We don't know what it's actually going to be called, but the Baby Bronco is what we're calling it for now. Let us know what you think of that. Of course, after this video is done being a live video, it will publish as a regular video. You can comment down there. We love to read all the comments, and we respond to a lot of those as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. and uh, yeah, Play us out, man. Yeah, time Thank for you for all the kind birthday wishes. It was really nice of you guys. We're going to go celebrate somewhere. <laughs> Without breaking any more of the furniture. Right, exactly. <laughs> Such mellow music, I yeah. feel old. Thank it's you. Our, it's, our, it's, you know, I tried to match your age with the music. Right. It should be like Owl of Wider, someone drinks.